there have been many different types of Pokemon. Those who protect which they hold most dear, and those who destroy purely out of nature. It's these Pokemon that create the balance of the entire Pokemon multiverse. But not all Pokemon fall into either category. Some are a part of their own bracket, and there are also those who seek their own sense of justice. One of these Pokemon just so happen to be the Pokemon of today's video. My name is Pokey, and this is the tale of... The story of Zeraora is one that's both very complicated and also very misunderstood. This Pokemon is unlike other legendaries or mythicals, as this Pokemon's story is split between two distinct timelines. But we will venture between each timeline to fully grasp the true character of Zeraora. Are you ready? Then let's go. The story begins with a girl named Margo. She caretakes for the Pokemon that reside in the forest outside of Fula City. Margo always comes to the forest to help the Pokemon there, and help keep them safe in any way she can. And for the most part, she's done just that. But after all, she's only a child and a kid with a good heart can only do so much. She gets confronted by grunts who are hoping to find rare Pokemon, whether to kill them and sell them for money, or to use them for their own selfish and evil acts. And as they approached her ready to strike and take away the Pokemon, Margot blocked them. But there's nothing she could do alone. The grunts were easily going to get through her by any means necessary. But what these grunts didn't know was that this girl wasn't alone. <laughs> Zeraora was his name, and although he destroyed the grunts as best he could, he was still severely injured. Luckily, a trainer named Ash and Margo's friends came to the rescue. Zeraora's story was then revealed to us in full. Zeraora was the keeper of the land outside of Fula City. He was beloved by all the Pokemon living there, and he vowed to protect them at all costs. But disaster struck as humanity's greed grew and grew, and they cut down the forest with flames 50 years ago. Many Pokemon died and Zeraora couldn't save them all no matter how hard he tried, as nothing is strong enough to dispel human greed. Zeraora was rightfully angry towards mankind, and he would use his strongest form of thunder, Plasma Fist, to enforce any kind of justice towards any human he would encounter from then on. The mountain forest in which Zeraora resided in was forbidden entry to any trader in Fula City, as whoever would enter would face the wrath of Plasma Fist. Nobody could ever escape Zeraora's fury. That much was certain. Fula City was granted the power of the wind by the legendary Pokemon Lugia, enriching the lives of everyone residing there. The place was one of the few cities that visibly showed the prosperity between humans and Pokemon, and we meet many different kinds of people including the ones who helped Margo with Zeraora. But although this city was filled with peace and love, like everything else in the world, nothing built can last forever. Due to a scientist's chemical research of effect spores, the chemicals leaked and spread throughout the entirety of Fula City, and the city went up in flames. You see, Fula City is powered by Lugia, but it's held together by a special stone that helps call Lugia in case of any emergency and gives off the power of the wind. But the stone isn't in place, and it's up to Ash and the group to bring it back and restore Fula City to its former glory. But if only it was that easy. Ash and Margo go searching for Zeraora's help, but it only enrages Zeraora even further. It was soon clear what Ash needed to do to quell Zeraora's anger through battle. It was a battle for acceptance. Zeraora needed this more than anything else right now. What he needed was closure.
After the climactic battle, Zaraora helped the city in restoring electricity using Plasma Fist. And with the stone in place, Lugia restored the city to its prosperous state. Zaraora was then allowed to coexist with the people of the city as the mayor revokes the banned entry of the forest. Zaraora finally learned to coexist with Pokemon and forgave humankind. There were so many contributing factors, but one thing was very much certain that Zaraora would protect both the people and Pokemon in Fula City, no matter the cost. But as I mentioned before, Zaraora's story doesn't end here, as we see him in a new light in a different timeline. Nothing like the prosperous nature of Fula City, but rather one filled with destruction and ruin. This timeline takes place in an alternate reality where the Alola region was overtaken by Ultra Beasts, but there was one trainer by the name of Dia who tries to fight back against the Ultra Beasts with his Pokemon, Zaraora. Ash meets Dia and learns about this timeline, one where Ultra Beasts have taken over and the heroes of this region were never found, and many perished because of that. After learning about the existence of parallel universes, Dia initiates a battle with Ash to see if he was strong enough to help him fight one of the strongest Ultra Beasts that had overtaken his land. The Ultra Beast in question was Guzzlord. Ash was about to see the true power of Zero Aura. <laughs> Although he lost, Dia saw strength in Ash, and the two of them went to stop Guzzlord once and for all. Guzzlord was powerful enough to destroy entire cities with ease and eat anything in its path. They couldn't beat it, but what they could do was send it back to where it belonged, using the power of... the successful mission, Ash was sent back to his original timeline. But one thing was strange. This Zeraora was far more connected with humans than the original Zeraora, but it makes sense that Zeraora would help Dia restore any balance he could to his broken world. After all, it's in his nature. He would do anything to protect Pokemon. He's been shown how much he is willing to go for them, and now we see that in full display, as he holds no grudge towards other humans like Ash. He uses his strength to protect and avenge. He may be cruel, sure, but inside, he was broken, and there was no one else to blame but the cruel world. But no matter the timeline, he will always find a way for justice to be served.